Greetings and welcome to the Krogan Express 24-7 Boat Show. Today we're going to take a tour of Krogan Express 5204 Amusant. Amusant has recently been repainted so we don't say uh, we, we don't say Amusant on the transom there but uh, trust me this is Amusant. She's got uh, brand new flag blue uh, hull sides and as you can see she's in wonderful shape. She's recently uh, returned from uh, some fabulous adventures in uh, Europe and, and later we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll, we'll be doing another video on that but we're, we're uh, pleased to have actually the owner of, uh, of, of Amusant with us today so uh, let's start our tour and we'll introduce uh, Mr. David Paisner. S say hey David. Welcome aboard Bob. Well thank you. <laughs> uh, so so you've, uh, you've had Amusant for how many years? When did you acquire? Twelve years. Twelve years, okay. We bought her in 2008. Okay. She's, a, uh, she's an 06 boat, correct? Correct. That, that, that we used a little bit for boat shows. And, That's and right. then ultimately you, you were the first owner of the boat. First, first and only. First and only That's owner. That's right. For, exactly. Uh, we bought her with 300 hours on the mains. Okay, very good. And she's got uh, 3,500 or so at this point? Sounds good. Okay, that's close enough. All right, very good. All right, well let's uh, let's kind of start with the cockpit here, and and what we'd like to do is just just walk around the, the boat and 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 point out the things that are uh, that are important. Uh, we we love the cockpit because it's covered for starters. It's covered from that sun, and uh, many of the owners have used uh, some kind of draping materials to block afternoon sun. If you wanted to come out here and have your cocktails, um, the co pit is amply large enough for you to put a table and four chairs so it can also be your dining room. When you want to dine al fresco, right? Absolutely. A couple of things I'll be. point out is the, the full depth boarding gates on both sides. It's, it, there isn't an easier boat to get on and off of when you're, particularly when you're at a floating dock, although we have uh, other opportunities when the fixed dock presents itself to get on board as well. As, as, uh, as we pointed out, the covered cockpit is terrific. Um, our lazarette here, if you can uh, get this cameraman, is uh, there's, there's virtually no equipment uh, in, the, uh, in the lazarette. Uh, I'm good now. Um, virtually no equipment in the lazarette. It's one of the things you want to try not to do is put your table over your uh, lazarette hatch because uh, that's, that's potentially awkward. Um, lots of storage down here. So the, the deck here itself is 100 square feet, a little more than that. And you've got um, you know, almost all of that space below it for stashing cleaning supplies, fenders, lines. Uh, what else do you put down there? Hoses. Bicycles. And bicycles, there you go, we folding bikes. bicycles down there. You bet. Yes, two bicycles fit very easily and can be picked up and put in without much effort. Super. And of course you forgot to mention, or you didn't mention, I don't so you forgot it, but as you'll hear later, we've been in Europe for eight years and we did a lot of med mooring during that time. So the transom gate was a critical element which allowed us to get on the boat easily and off the boat. And of course, when you're swimming and using the swim platform, the transom gate is very helpful. Got big, uh, big hoss uh, cleats on, on both of the sides and the corners. So, uh, so, so from a line handling standpoint, uh, it's uh, it's very handy as well. Uh, also, got a hot and cold shower over there, David. You want to open that and uh, show the cameraman the, the the hot and cold shower. And then grab the. Uh, this boat has not one but two cameras above uh, where you are there, and uh, so we have one that's pointed more down, that's more for docking. You can see the corners of the boat, and the other one is pointed uh, more straight aft for just exactly. when you're running from in the pilot house. In particular, it gives you a nice view of uh, what's when, coming up behind you. When you're docking a stern in, um, the and you'll see this later, the dinghy blocks your view aft. So having a camera with this camera with a wide angle lens gives you actually your view of your swim platform so you have an exact knowledge of how far away you are if you needed to uh, bring it in single-handed without help. And when you're in the intercoastal waterway or rivers, um, having this camera, which was installed because it was actually a requirement to navigate inland in Europe, you need 360 degrees visibility. So 
that second camera really helps. There you go. I didn't know that. That's that's interesting. Um, most of our owners do figure out that uh, that you can see the corners well enough from the flybridge, but in particular from the pilot house, it's uh, it's a it's a challenge without having the camera. So most of us, when we dock uh, stern two in a in a slip, we're we're running from up top, and and that adds an extra element of of seeing your corners. Um, here in the in the Lazarette, we also have the uh, cable master for the for the shore power cord. That's a seventy five foot fifty amp cable, single single fifty runs the boat. There's also a, a, a one ten AC outlet there. Um, there's a dockside water uh, service inlet and and a water wash down as well. So, uh, and finally. David added uh, later on the later boats we went to the to the cockpit sound system, but David added the the speakers back here and 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 the control on the uh, so the, it's the a, zone control there as well. So you have a, a four, four zone, zone four zone fusion. fusion system, including the cockpit, the saloon, the pilot house, and the flybridge. Each has its own separate uh, volume control. And it is properly saloon, right? That's what I call it. <laughs> it w well, the, the, on this boat, it's a saloon. Why it don't is. we come on inside and let's have a look at the at the saloon? Speaking of, you notice you're entering into the saloon from nice big French doors. They're they're a super high quality, uh, weather tight door uh, with the the pair of doors that dog down very nice. They're ship quality doors, so you'll you'll appreciate that in in general. Um, Coming on into the to the salon here, we'll start with the L set T on the starboard side. It's uh, it's frankly it does not convert, but it's long enough to to sleep there in a pinch, especially if you pull the cushions off. Lots of storage underneath the set T there. Uh, also access to the to the below deck uh, area for for servicing or potentially additional storage. Got an end table with a with a um, locker and 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 drawer as well. Uh, cherry high-low table here that that lowers for coffee level and raises up for dining. Uh, we have it. Uh, we have it set. There you go. Now you're down. We have it set for dining at the moment, but uh, at any rate, the point is that it's uh, it, it's handy that way. Um, I, on this side, David, you want to kind of talk about your 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 favorite stressless chairs over there? I love these stressless chairs. You'll never have a more comfortable seat than you do in <laughs> one of these. And um, they recline, and they're very comfortable chairs, and they match well with the saloon, and they're open in the bottom and light and airy. Um, to add to what Bob said, if you take those upright cushions off the settee, many uh, a time I have slept uh, back there, and I'm five, nine and a half, and I can stretch out completely and sleep quite comfortably back there. I can attest to the fact that 6'4 can even stretch out pretty well, too, so... Um, and we have one one of the footstools for the stressless chairs here. Is the other one in the in the guest stateroom? No, nope. do you have we, two? No, just, we only have we on only have one. We okay. ordered it only with one because we didn't really feel there was room for didn't, two of didn't them. Didn't need the second one. Okay. Didn't need the second one, and we use um, this stool sometimes if we were to have six people for dinner, which we often have. You can, it can uh, be another have. Seat. Four around there, exactly, and the stool goes at the head of the table, and we bring one of the chairs in from the cockpit. So you can dine six people or eight people, actually, quite comfortably around this. One of the things we may not have mentioned was this coffee table opens up. And so you could have, um, we had two Thanksgivings in St. Catherine's Dock in London with eight people around this table. And, uh, do they celebrate it was a Thanksgiving lot of fun. over there in Mary They Old do England. not. We had to find Americans. <laughs> okay. And we Very did. Good. Um, over here on the, uh, behind the stressless chairs also, there's some nice under deck storage. Uh, quite a little space to, to, to have more things disappear on you. <laughs> Let's uh, let's come this way. I want to show you. We'll move into the galley. Uh, we have an ice maker here, a nice U-line ice maker. Uh, most of our owners will store their libations next to it. We can call this a bookcase or a bar or whatever you want. You've got a little room for your drinks, more storage here, books and, and tchotchkes and various things there, um, and a nice round port light which really lends the it, it, it enforce reinforces the classic nature of the boat frankly it just wouldn't be quite right if we didn't have a couple round port lights on the boat 
also provides wonderful ventilation for the galley, right? Uh huh. You, you want know, to talk since you're the since you are the the gourmet chef. I think you need to walk us through the galley. Well, like that classic movie about falling in love at first sight. Um, <laughs> it's the lines of this boat that really make your heart sing. I mean, it is such a classic looking boat, and wonderful, ha wonderfully handling as well. Yes, the the galley is. Uh, terrific place to cook. We spent eight years in Europe on this boat and we spent most of that time uh, eating on board, um, taking advantage of all the different types of foods that we could buy and prepare. The refrigerator freezer is amply large enough for you to keep track of anything you About might 14 need. 14 cubic feet. And I always kept my herbs and spices up here and fill that right up. Um, the microwave, and then you have this storage area. We would keep plates and uh, glasses, and an, again, lots of shelf room for lots glasses. Lots of folks use that kind of as a pantry, uh, boxes of uh, you know, instant potatoes or something fit in there very nicely. Instant potatoes. I know, I know. I knew you were going to react to that. <laughs> I knew that would get a rise out of you. What are instant potatoes? Anyway, um, so you have lockers all above you, which <laughs> are just terrific for storage yeah. space. The boat is equipped with a Force 10 three range, uh, sorry, three burner hob and uh, oven. Um, you also have six drawers back here and one large drawer where we kept our pots and pans underneath the stove. Um, so obviously going back to the range, it's propane, which is like most of the Krogan Expresses, we don't feel like you should have to fire the generator up to heat a can of soup or... Uh, in incredibly convenient. Uh, the propane tanks are kept on the flybridge, which you'll see later in a vented container, which is uh, as it should be. Um, pull out, pull out sink faucet uh, is 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 nice. And with a spray and single, you can. And, and, very convenient. And filtered water there. The, the you equip the uh, the, the yes. cold water with a filtration. Uh, our cold water is completely filtered, so you can um, be confident in what you're drinking. We have always drunk from the tanks on this boat, never felt we needed bottled water. They're, they're stainless. The water tanks are stainless, and we've had, uh, you know, there's no problem with our stainless tanks. They're, they're, they're terrific. 380 gallons worth, I believe. Uh, 370, 300, maybe. Three I, I'm, I think it's 300 on this boat, but I'm not sure. We'll, we'll go with 370, and Okay, we'll go with... Aside. Okay. <laughs> um, I love... Your electrical panel here. One of the things that sold the boat is the electrical panel. If this boat were made with the care and consideration that these wires were connected. Look at every one of those radius. They're just perfect. I mean, this is what you want to see in an electric panel. In most boats, you'll see spaghetti, but here it's perfection. The wires are all numbered and for tracing and so on and so forth as well. Now, this is probably a good place to talk about. You've made some changes to this boat, David, in terms of the the power, does it call a power conditioner? What do you call that? Uh, well, no, the, the what, box we, that's what down we did, um, and you may want to get a look at this box here because it's something that does not exist in any of the other Krogans. So that box gives you the ability to switch between the aft input and the port side pilot house input. Um, and that was done so that we could put on what's called an AC electrical conditioning box. This boat can use electricity from anywhere in the world. It will take power at any amperage, at any voltage, and convert it to the 110, 60 hertz electricity that the air conditioning system, the cruise airs, and the refrigerators, and all the pumps on the boat use. So you have flexibility on this boat, unlike any other Krogan Express. You could ship this over to Europe, hop on it, and go wherever you want, and the electricity would work perfectly. And I checked with the folks in response to a question that that also acts as an isolation transformer as well. When you're running through that, 
it does provide isolation too. So if you're in a situation even domestically where you, you're, you're questioning your, your power supply, your power source, you can use it for that purpose as well. I'm sure. So, so this is a little different. This one, normally you put a switch down here for the forward and, and aft locations, right? Because, uh, be, but because the boat wasn't set up. So what you've got, you you use this switch then to say either go through my AC systems box or not go through my AC right. systems box. It's technically called a static frequency converter, which That's is why SFC. this is la labeled SFC. Okay. Right. Thank you. So you have your 12 volt DC side, and your 110 AC side on top and the converter um, the inverter the excuse me right. the inverter AC which powers all of the plugs and the refrigerator on the six uh, circuits down so, here so so the so everything in here the 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 fridge the microwave the ice maker and all the outlets are all running off of the inverter and then up here of course all of the double breakers are, are going to be your 240 and, and and the single breakers are your your 110 or 120 items. Here's your black water tank monitor that we'll tell you about later. Um, and, and your uh, master vault uh, monitoring system as well. For the for batteries. The, for the batteries, that's right. The batteries are were put on the boat about six months ago and are were new at that time. New last summer. Uh, I think there's three 8Ds, three, uh, three master vault AGM 8Ds. So uh, yeah. should be good to go for a while right. from a house Six, standpoint. 675? Right, exactly. Total. 675 amps total. All right, well, let's head up to the pilot house and uh, see, what, see what we can see up there. We'll start getting into the business end of running the boat. How about that? Sounds good. Hey, David, uh, why don't we come up and uh, show, uh, show these folks the pilot house? Well, you have to love this pilot house. It sells the boat. Your, your lines of visibility are fabulous. Your spouse or significant other, I know she's not there, but think about 3,500 hours just sitting right there. Well, with well her I, I'm no Wendy, but right I can there. demonstrate the... Uh, it's not the same the, thing. The, <laughs> it's not the same thing, Bob. Just uh, isn't. Yeah, I, you know, I might, be, I might be just as helpful underway, right. but, so, uh, you know. So there she was sitting right there as the <laughs> Eiffel Tower was, or the Tower Bridge of London was... Uh, Tower Bridge, sorry, and uh, London uh, was right in front of us. And so you have a STID adjustable chair, which moves way up if you need it, and that's very helpful. Slice um, fore and aft as well. Exactly. So usually uh, when we're, at the, when we're at, at, at the dock or at anchor, we slide it forward just to provide a little more room to, to move around right. here and when we're running we slide it back a little and, bit. And this table can swivel if you want and give you a little extra room as well. Um, the boat is equipped with two marine, uh, Raymarine E-27s, e one twenty sevens. excuse right. me, an I-70 and a P-70. And this electronic station is repeated on the flybridge. So you have uh, four chart plotters on the boat. Those were done in 2012, I believe. They were done in 2012, um, and they're still wonderful units. So one of them is set as a depth sounder, and um, the other one, the two chart plotters have Navionics, which are uh, charts. Terrific system. You have a remote for the um, autopilot, and you have, and as far as the electronics, to continue with the electronics, you have basically two independent um, VHF stations. So this command mic controls the VHF unit on the flybridge. And there's a command mic up there as well that controls this unit. So you have two complete units at, at each station. At, at you each have access station to both of them at right. any time. You sure. have access to both of them. Um, now let's go back to the electronics real quick. What 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 I believe is I think it's running Lighthouse Two. Does that sound right? It is running Lighthouse Two. So 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 they were still s selling Lighthouse Two maybe two years ago. So Lighthouse Three just replaced it fairly recently. And, and you could actually still get that same unit. It's the hybrid touch, which means it's got some 
controls off of the some non-touch controls on the right side of the of the displays but it also is full touch screen so it is a full touch there's screen. The, the electronics while they might be 2012 they're still very current and there's no need to be uh, thinking about an, investing in new electronics at this I, point. I would say that the incremental change wouldn't be worth that's right it's a great any it's a great or, it's a great setup with it with is a good setup and yep, so on. yeah exactly so. um, you have two full-size chart chart drawers which um, let's see here uh, obviously I left these here because this looks like it's somewhere in Germany um, and, and those are included with the boat those so, uh, are included with the boat in case you need them there's there's a reason to, to buy this boat right that's there. right uh, oh Helgoland now Helgoland is off the mouth of the Elba and Helgoland is a real joy to go to because there's no VAT there, so we put on fuel at one third the price. Okay. She's 25 miles into the North Sea off that the coast. That is a that is a great reason. Germany. And what you try to do is arrive there with uh, next to no fuel, so you on, can take full fumes. advantage on fumes. On okay. fumes, exactly. <laughs> so this area here with the boat, I have kept a couple of binoculars, but uh, and also includes a very expensive uh, medical emergency kit which um, has hardly ever been used. There, you can see we've got our uh, covers for our electronics store down there as well. Good spot for storing just about anything. Usually people keep binoculars, uh, handheld VHF, your flare kit. It's a good spot for right. all of those. And things. the Intellian controller. So the boat comes with a satellite for dish network or you can do DISH or DirecTV. Or DirecTV right, exactly. off the Intellian now. Exactly. Um, moving uh, across there, I think uh, let's look down for a second. You can see the NAVCOM electrical panel, uh, Mr. Cameraman. And, um, and so basically that's the panel for, for running the boat primarily. The other one we looked at is primarily when you're at the dock, um, the, the house functions. This is the, the operating functions. Right above that is the, uh, is the genset panel. And um, I can't remember the hours. Are we at 1,500 or so, David? Does that um, sound about right? It is. About 1,500 hours on the, on the 12 kilowatt Northern Lights. That's right. Which is in, which is in great shape. Um, you'll also see a whistle control for the Kallenberg, the dual trumpet uh, Kallenberg horns, which is fabulous. It's a, it's a wonderful horn. Uh, intermittent uh, Exalto uh, wipers uh, control there as well. A bilge pump panel. Um, your your HVAC controls, windlass controls, and uh, also your trim tabs. Uh, this has has Bennett uh, trim tabs, which uh, which are basically not used at displacement speeds, but when we're running faster, um, the boat will run 16 knots all day, and the and the tabs are uh, are useful when you're running faster to to help get uh, to get up on plane, if you will, and and also to keep the bow down. Flatten you out. That's right. It's one time when you want to be flat. You, you do, indeed. Um, up above, you'll see the, we talked earlier about the fusion and the four zones, so David can point the, the, to the fusion control head there. And um, we do have speakers here in the, in the pilot house as well as up top. We'll, we'll go look at those next. And, um, and then you'll see your, um, mon your, your engine, your Yanmar engine control uh, panels. The, the boat has uh, 440 Yanmars, which we said earlier, a little bit over 3,500 hours. I think they're well serviced. Uh, just installed exhaust elbows, and uh, they're current as far as their thousand-hour service as well. Coming back over here to the to the settee, we didn't mention earlier. You can see even a guy my height can sit up here. It's well elevated, and you get Wendy on your big trip had great views from up there. Frankly, fabulous views, which is which is not always the case in a watch berth, but it makes it a true watch berth because because you can actually see. And it's long enough that you can sleep on it, and it pulls out and actually converts to a double. Also, mm -hmm. we'll also point out the uh, the half hull model here, which uh, which commemorates her original color before she was repainted. She was jade mist green, and it's uh, kind of fun to have the 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 old color commemorated there. Nice full keel, flat sections aft, which which allows for the speed. The forward uh, half is is really a full displacement forward half and that gives the efficiency at slower speeds. So, so this boat uh, down around 18 knots is going to burn three gallons an hour or so. Uh, it's really as, as, as efficient as any full displacement boat at slower speeds. 
even at 16 knots, you're burning 22 gallons an hour, I'd say, with this boat, which Did, is which is really, really terrific. I, I think you said 18 knots, and you meant eight knots. Eight knots. knots. Did I say 18? Thanks I for thanks for. you did. Okay. Think eight knots, did. you're burning three. Be good right. if we could burn three gallons at 18, Wouldn't but we haven't figured fabulous. out how to do that no. just yet. No, no. Yes, at eight knots. Slow down to, right. slow down to eight knots, and you're... Yeah. Uh, typically, we run in the low nines because hull speed's 9.6, and you're going to burn probably five, six gallons an hour in, in the low nines with this boat. So, this boat has always proved to be incredibly reliable and fuel efficient. Uh, really remarkable if you're the kind of person who's buying this boat to actually put hours on the main and cruise, you won't be disappointed. You have definitely a not wonderful cruising range, a 600 gallon uh, diesel. Twin 300 gallon, uh, 300 gallons on each side, and um, that gives you uh, 100 hours at least running, which gives you eight, nine hundred miles between need to uh, fill the boat. If you're trying to stretch your legs out and you really want to cover distance, and you're going to run down around eight knots, you probably get 1,500 miles uh, uh, nautical miles of range out of it comfortably. At uh, at 16 knots, you're going to be more like 400, frankly, but uh, you know, and, and it's somewhere in between if you're mixing it up. Well, let's go up top and have a look at the uh, flybridge, shall we? Okay. Let's do that. Exciting. So it's just a few steps up from the pilot house to the flybridge. Comfortable, uh, comfortable steps up. And um, I don't know, for most of us, this is the best place to run the boat. We've got a pretty nice pilot house, but frankly, nothing better than being on the flybridge, right? Nope. When the weather is beautiful, this is the place to be. You have terrific visibility from up here, and um, I'm using the 5204 is a terrific boat, very flexible and agile handling with a powerful Vetus bow thruster and your twin screws aft. You can do just about anything with her that needs to be done. So you said Vetus. Uh, I think it's side power, isn't it? Or did oh, you change it over to me. Vetus? No, okay. you're right. Side it power, is side bow power. Thruster. Yeah. And twin, so between the bow thruster and, and twin screws, you can put her just about anywhere she needs to go. Anywhere you need there to you go. There you go. That's good. So the same electronics, as, as, uh, as David pointed out, it's the same, uh, same two chart plotters, and uh, you've got the same autopilot control head. And, and we do this, I don't know that we mentioned earlier, this the, the, the other display here is for depth primarily. It's a multifunction display and you can bring up some other things, but mostly that's to have nice big depth numbers there to make sure that uh, you know how much water you're in. We have, uh, we have two transducers on this boat and, and so we'll run one, you know, kind of focus on the chart plotter so you'll get depth on the chart plotters, but the redundancy there as well. Um, and the other is an I-70, which before Lighthouse 2, the autopilot required its own control. So the autopilot um, controls were not on the main chart plotter display. And so you have that redundancy as well. And, and are, this is, it is integrated with the chart it plotters. It is completely right? integrated. So you can place your plot here and, and then And you just hit that. connect, uh, right. you hit auto and off you go. Right, right, okay, very good, wonderful. So, so again, we talked about the two different uh, VHF radios. You've got this one here that has a command mic down below, and this is the command mic for the other unit from down below. So you've got, again, effectively two, two radios up here. You have your Bennett trim tab controls right here, and you have your windlass anchor up and down here. Actually, three places for the windlass, because you've got uh, a manual control at both stations plus buttons on the foredeck too, and we'll go up there later and tour the foredeck. Uh, you've got a STID chair here. This boat I don't think originally had a, a no, STID chair. No, so I added uh, the STID up here. We spent quite a bit of time here, and we wanted our bottom to be comfortable. <laughs> the, the, the newer boats all do have the STIDs, and I think you had chair envy maybe and figured, uh, you know, we need to change this out, don't we? I wanted it. <laughs> Um, notice that the helm is on the center line, which is uh, really ideal from a captain's perspective as opposed to being off to one side, mm -hmm. so, so we appreciate that. Nice L settee here. This part of the settee is great for canvas storage and other things, and as David mentioned earlier, this part is actually the propane locker, and it is vented as it should be, so it's a dedicated vented propane locker, uh, which meets, uh, meets ABYC uh, standards, boat building standards. 
Um, let's walk back and have a look at the boat deck. And uh, David, uh, it's covered, but David can point out his, his gas grill. I can attest to the fact that David can cook some nice meals on that, uh, on that so, gas grill. So, if I'm his own word to be yours, you could butterfly and grill a marinated leg of lamb beautifully on this Australian barbecue, which is... Uh, Wait, is that a Barbie? It is a Barbie. Okay. And, and it is, <laughs> it it is in my opinion, much better than the magma options that were available. I purchased this at the Newport Boat Show, and I've never been sad about it. Lamb on the Barbie. Lamb on the Barbie. <laughs> Steaks on the Barbie. There you go. That's it. So, so it's convenient to the propane locker, so of course it's fed from the same tanks, and I think you have an extra tank on this boat, don't I you? I do have an extra tank, and also this has a shutoff of its own. In, right, sure. So that you uh, it's can... It's valved that way. It's, so. It has a valve right. shutoff, so it's all safe. So David, standing in front of the mast, maybe you can move out of the way a little bit here. So I think the, the clearance on this boat is 22 and a half or 23. Do you know the, well, the it's, mast up? It's 22 and a half, I think. Okay. All right, but the mast does drop, so you can actually get that mast. In fact, with the center opening over here, if you put the dink in the water, that, that mast would go down all the way flat on the deck, right? It, it would, that's right. So, um, but normally, um, you're, it's not really required because the um, wind... Windscreen? Thank you. Right. The windscreen and the top of this there's not much different. I mean, if you, most of the bridges here are 14 or 15 feet, and with this down, you can get underneath them. So it I'm doesn't, thinking if somebody has an extreme bridge requirement of some sort, right? you actually, the hard height on this boat is under 15 feet. So if you drop the bimini and that mast all the way That's down, right. put the dink in the water, you could get under a 15 I, foot bridge if you had. I to. did get under a 15, I got under a fixed railroad bridge going down from Lubeck to Hamburg under 14 feet, six inches. Okay, well, it, there you go. And, and it was this close. Between Lubeck and Hamburg, it's, uh, you, you needed every bit of that low height. I needed height. every bit of that. It <laughs> saved me three days. Otherwise, I would have That's had to bonus. go back up the Jutland Peninsula and go through so, the Kiel so how Canal. So how do you get that mast down, David? Uh, it's, it's a pretty, pretty good-sized mast, uh, and you're a strong guy. but uh, It is, and when I was younger, I used to be able to pick up and put down this mast on my own. But okay. now, in my elder status, I have built a system with a four by four post that you can place behind the mast, releasing the mast a little bit, putting the pin back in with the mast leaning back just a little bit. You drop this four by four post in and it has a block and tackle which connect to this shackle right here. And a child could pull this, uh, put the mast down or pull the mast back up. So it doesn't require any particular strength. Now that sounds a little scary to lean the mast back and hope that it doesn't go anywhere. But the truth is the it's weight forward, is biased it's very forward. forward. Yeah. So the reality is you have to pull it back initially to even get it. So, That's so you're really just kind of holding it back to get the board in there. It's not trying to come down on you. No, it is not. And then you hook the, the block and tackle up and it's easy to, right. to drop it at that point. Wouldn't want to do it in a four foot seas. Amen. But right. other than that, <laughs> you'll be fine. All right. Super. Um, we have a, uh, a crane here, a nautical structures. Uh, thousand pound crane which will put the the dinghy in the water and that's an AB Nautilus 11 foot uh, console type dinghy with a great running 25 horse Yamaha on it and uh, she, that she Yamaha has just been amazing fabulous doesn't doesn't get a lot better so 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 the boat can, really it's a one person job to put the boat in the water better to oh, have a second oh, but David did it always, himself most always. of the time Right. Yeah, I've always put it in. Um, what I do, my system is to attach the forward and the stern line, and like that way you can, the painter and the stern line, right. and uh, you can control the boat. It's a manual swing, but once it swings out, you can the rotation actually, then is actual actually manual and, and on this one actually the no it's a hydraulic lift so right so the so the lift of the crane is is is, is hydraulic easy and, and easy to hook do. it up and then just give it a shove right. and absolutely right. drop it down and you have your lines attached and you just 
drop over the unofficial. Are we talking about the unofficial access to the flybridge? Well, we, we certainly, it, it's not hard to climb the rails here. And uh, in, in fact, um, now, when, when we're- I am not a child, but it's just that easy to come across and come down so that when your dinghy is there, you just drop right down and you're fine. Actually, you come down over to this side here. We, we put a sign in your way though, that doesn't help, the no. brokerage sign, but- and uh, so. You now have, with the deep access, with the trans, uh, the side gate, you easily have access and the dinghy just lies right up. So the point is you're starting the movement up here and you're getting the boat around and then you just drop down and, 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 and it's a wired remote, but it's hooked in, you take the remote And the wire and, brings down, the down. wire comes all the way down to this point where you're standing on the deck and you can still control the boat. So. Piece of cake. Piece right. of cake. So before we look at a comma, you can stay down there, and why don't we go to the uh, to, to the bow, and uh, we'll we'll meet you there. Okay. How about that. That'd be great. All right. See you there. See you there. <laughs> so here we are on the bow of Amuzon, and uh, we're going to take a little tour of the ground tackle. Did you ever have occasion to drop the hook uh, over in Europe or, or over here? Did you you use this on, on occasion? All the time. Okay. The anchor um, is a wonderful combi anchor. It sets easily and it holds well. There, um, another modification I made is that I've added uh, 50 additional feet of chain. So on this boat you have for tack ground tackle 100 feet of chain and 300 feet of line, which would hold this boat in a hurricane, I'm sure. It's, it's 3 eighths high test and then 3 eighths line, I think. So you've got a total, did you say of 300? Is that what you just three said? 3 eighths line, no, no. 3, line three quarter, did is, I say? Uh, 3 eighths chain, 3 quarter go. line, hello. There you go. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, 3 eighths would be, uh, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that's sort of painter size. So, that, so we have a real nice ship's quality um, Freeman hatch here to access the anchor locker. Um, it's compartmentalized so that if you do, if you did want to add a second anchor, you can keep your ground tackle to to either side. There's room in here for uh, for for lines and fenders and and your wash down hose and so on. Um, so it's a it's a it's a great space to have for sure. Um, you all, this boat also has a, 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 like the new ones. David has added a, a saltwater wash down. So you, do you know which one, uh, which one is salt water and which one is fresh there? That's the I'm testing you here a little bit. That's the salt water. Okay, the outboard one, and, and that's, that's the, the fresh, fresh water. water. All right, so, so you can get all that mess off your anchor when you're bringing it up and then uh, finish it up with some fresh water to, to keep your decks clean. And, and here is the pedals. additional foot pedals. But actually, and I hesitate to say that Bob is wrong, that, but that's I'm, unlikely. I'm, I'm going Highly to say unlikely. it. There is a fourth anchor control on this boat. There, okay, uh, you are correct. There, there would be a wireless remote. There is a wireless remote. On the yacht controller. Amuzon has been equipped with a yacht controller, which means that um, you can easily single hand this boat. And I have been for the last 12 years because my wife is not a boat person. So this wireless She's remote- She's a joy and a tremendously willing accomplice, but- uh, And has tremendous skills, just not with a boat. There you go. <laughs> so, um, and so that a yacht controller gives you control over both main engines, the um, thruster, bow thruster, and the anchor. So when I'm bringing the anchor up, I have the ability to stand right here and shoot water right down the chain and keep that chain locker as clean as you would want it while I use the yacht controller to bring the chain up and down. So, so, it, so it's beautiful actually because with the yacht controller you can bump the boat a little forward, bump the boat a little bit aft and Absolutely. adjust the bow hit the, a hit little the bit if bow, you need to right, and if keep you're the chain hit. centered in the, in the pocket as it's coming up. And, Exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's a yeah. terrific thing. You can look right down at the water and see where your chain is while you're retracting it. Fabulous. Great system. Well, let's, uh, let's take a walk down the side deck. I want to show you our, uh, our, how easy it is to handle lines and, 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 and also point out the side decks themselves. Notice how, how tall the railings are. Even up here, they're, they're a little taller still when we drop down on the side decks, but the railings are nice and tall, nice and sturdy. The decks themselves are very wide, and um, you've got additional grab handles over here if you can uh, 
come this way, Anthony, and uh, we'll show you the grab handles. Also, uh, we talked earlier about the additional power uh, in input. So we've got an extra 50 foot or 50 amp uh, service here. If you're, uh, if you're inclined to bow in frequently, you can carry along a 40 or 50 foot uh, 50 amp cord and, and hook in here. And, uh, and of course you have cable and TV inlets as well here. I'm not sure you'll probably use those a whole no. lot, but, but they're there just in case. And let's not gloss over the fact that the Krogan Express people put this angle mount. You look at many boats and their rails are just top mounted and aren't nearly as sturdy. You have tremendous confidence in these side rails. They are really very well attached to the boat. I also passed up, David, if you'll come my way and be out of the way of it, the, the forward boarding gate there. Do you want to show uh show everybody the forward boarding gate don't sure. probably need to do the lifeline but uh, so you've got another boarding gate here so when the docks are uh, if you're at a fixed dock situation you need to get on and off the boat forward when the docks are a little higher um, you've got that opportunity there that works real well we saw that yesterday at uh, on another boat we needed that or if you're in a short uh, dock situation and you need to bow in uh, that's the situation with the 79th Street Boat Basin in New York City. And uh, we had a step ladder there and we could get on and off the boat on this. It was very convenient. Good solid connection. So, so come this way and, and David you might want to step inside there for a second so I can can, can show the, the viewers our, our spring cleats. We've got two of them on the 52s. And, and we like that they're up in the tow rail here where you're not going to knock them. Sometimes they're, they're toe knockers or ankle knockers. They're more on the deck. These are up out of the way. Super easy to, to, to hand someone a line or, or bring a line over. You're not fighting uh, fashion plates and other things uh, just, just you know, from the standpoint of carrying lines along the side of, of the boat. Um, even, say, picking up a mooring, what we find works best is we can grab the mooring uh, aft where, where things are low, even maybe with the door open, if we need to reach down, grab the mooring, and then we can walk it all the way up the side without having to worry about getting past structural elements on the boat. So very easy. And then you can see the rest of the way aft to the, to the deck, there's two steps into the cockpit. So the boat is just, it's, it's a super easy boat. And again, you're doing it on the side decks with your, with your yacht controller most of the time, David, right? With, with the yacht controller, you can be standing right up on the bow and get that mooring. You're just standing right over it. It's a well, terrific shoot, you thing. You don't even walk the boat, uh, walk it. A lot of people do do that. I don't think we pointed out earlier the, uh, the, the Dutch doors here, which are awful nice. So, so you can see that the, you can close just the bottom part there, and uh, that's a signature of the Krogan Express as well. So Super nice. Yeah, if there's a tiny little bit of chop or spray, you close this bottom door and you can still get a wonderful breeze from the top doors that are open. Absolutely. Okay, well, let's go in and have a look at the, uh, at the staterooms. How about that? That'd be great. So it's just a few easy steps down from the pilot house to the accommodations. And down here, you'll find two staterooms and two heads. This is the day head, or the guest head, and it is a full head, so there's a nice stand-up shower there with a seat, and um, frankly, it's very comfortable even for somebody my size. Vacuum flush head uh, in both, in both uh, heads, and um, very comfortable, uh, uh, frankly, super comfortable um, head. Um, across from the head is a stacked washer-dryer, it's a GE stack washer dryer. It's a 240 dryer and the dryer is vented so it's, uh, it's very effective. It does a great job drying clothes as well as washing them, of course. A little storage above that for uh, WD-40, for example, but most people will capture their, uh, will, will, will use that for their washing uh, items, their, washing their detergent. detergent and so on. Um, engine room uh, access is here. It's, uh, it's a terrific, again, a highlight of the boat, a walk-in, stand-up, uh, walk, you know, full walk around engine room. So we'll we'll go down there in a couple minutes and have You're a look. You're spoiling the it, surprise. I, I, oh, sorry to do that uh, to <laughs> to you folks. All right, David's going to take you on a little tour of the guest stateroom. Then, uh. as uh, you heard earlier, Wendy and I uh, traveled in this boat in Europe for eight years, so we didn't have a lot of guests, but. We certainly did have a lot of work, and this desk was a very convenient place from which to do that. And then we have this, 
which is a drop-down bunk, so your grandchildren just will be delighted when they get here and can sleep up here. Pullman berth, and, and I've actually slept up there uh, once or twice, so it will take a full-size a full size human, but it will. fabulous for, for smaller folks. And it has a chain support so that you needn't worry about any issues. Listen, if it, if it, if it held me, it's going to hold most, uh, most everybody watching this, I suspect. All together. <laughs> this is there. a easy there, big guy. There, this is a <laughs> double size bed uh, pull out. This pulls out all the way to the door. So I haven't measured it, but I would guess very much that it equates to a double bed. David made a little modification. So this layout, uh, the, the guest stateroom layout, is our standard layout. We built uh, two or three of them with with variations, uh, with with different layouts, but. But everybody seems to appreciate the flexibility of this space, that it can be both an office, a den, as well as accommodate up to three people. Mm -hmm. but, but David did a modification to the settee that allows it to pull out a little further than, than the boat it was originally built. The newer boats do that as well. But it does make it very close to the width of a double bed mm -hmm. uh, when it's open. And if you can step in here and take a look, we have a wonderful hanging locker. So you have all of your um, wet gear actually as close as you need it, if that's possible. And I used to keep day packs and other um, out, outside clothing in this locker. Up here, there is an alarm which has not been used since it was installed. Um, the detectors are all wireless and so this could easily be replaced but this de this alarm was designed to use a sim card and be connected to um cell phone so that you could have it set it has a give you some remote monitoring of the remote boat. monitoring sure. uh co2 a fire and there's even a water detector down in the engine room so so that locker uh, we typically use that you'll notice uh, that there's both an electrical outlet and a and a cable tv connection there so if you wanted to put a TV in this space, you've got the, it's already basically wired for it. And oftentimes we'll keep our, um, our, like our dust buster in there and you can say it can stay plugged in and stay charged. So we find just like that, that it's, uh, it's useful for that. Just like that one right there. Now you women, when you're going to those formal events off right off the boat, I know you'll want this and I'm not sure if it's in any Come other on, program. Be careful. Express. You're, talking, you, you, you're getting a little, you know, you're in, in some difficult territory there. Well, Maybe. I don't know. My wife had this, insisted on this full-length mirror so she could see what she It's a great place to like. kind of, uh, you know, look at your belt and, you know. Exactly. And, and, and get a little uh, sad about uh, what you're seeing. But uh, right. at any rate, uh, it's there. Let's take a look at the master. How about, do you want to follow me this way? We're headed right down the hall and uh, uh, down the companion way into the master. So... The, the, uh, probably the centerpiece of the, of the master is the center island queen berth. It actually is a standard, uh, standard queen, a true queen. So linens, uh, you don't have to worry about custom linens. It's got a great mattress on it, very comfortable. Um, lots of headroom at the, at, the, uh, at the head of the bed. But also what's nice is the boat carries her beam very far forward. And, and oftentimes in a, in a forward master, it can be difficult to get sheets on and off the bed, but, but as you can see with my knee on this little bench, I can reach the top of the bed without a problem, and so making this bed is, is not an issue. Um, you don't have to be a gymnast and climb on the bed to try to get sheets on and off. Um, I'll point out uh, from a storage standpoint, there's a six drawer dresser, huge drawers here. The, the bed itself raises, I don't know if we've got the power on here, but if we do, it's on a power strut, and it'll come all the way up. I'm not going to go all the way for the time, but as you can see, it will actually raise all the way up to access the storage under there, as well as the, uh, the bow thruster battery bank. If you come over this way, we'll show you the other dresser on this side. And, and, and as well as the, the unique feature. So this has a live TV mirror for, for, uh, for 
Or you could actually use it as a TV, even David. And I think that's pretty much how David and Wendy used it. So we have a we have a the biggest TV by far and a master on a Krogan Express. We do, we do, and we are not in the least bit ashamed of it. <laughs> we love. I didn't our, suggest that you should be. <laughs> we love our TV. We have a sound bar, and there is a large subwoofer in this locker right here. And we, because we were in Europe, and the Intellian in most places did not help us because we were too far south. Um, there's the ability to plug in to a USB slot and or your computer and take a feed from either one of those. So, into so this. you could have movies, for example, on a little hard drive or something. Absolutely. And on, right, and, and watch them that way. And that's Super. what we did, yeah. Lots of drawers here, and of course the, the working space of a dresser. Uh, hanging lockers on both sides. Nice size one here with the other door that opens this way. So that locker is actually, although this is only a half door, the locker is full-sized all the way to the bulkhead. Absolutely. And then there is, for you gentlemen, there did, is... Did you actually, were you able to use that locker? I, I think on my boat, I'd be down the hall somewhere, uh, you know. No, I I, I, to use, okay. I I had to have some place for my for tuxedo, your, for right? Your, your, <laughs> everybody needs a place on and, the boat and, for their tuxedo. For their tux, exactly. Yes. No so, question. yes, that was mine. The um, They very thoughtfully used all of the available space in this master stateroom. Um, there's storage area behind both of these um, doors and uh, be underneath the bench that Bob was kneeling on to make the bed is also um, works very well for us as a hamper for okay. dirty clothes. Sure. That's, Storage everywhere. It's a hallmark Storage of the Krogan design. If there's, if there's some space, there's a door, a drawer, a hatch, mm -hmm. some way to access it. I should also point out, uh, I'm 6'4", and you can see the headroom in here. I think we have 7'4 headroom uh, with, the, with the port lights and the, and the overhead hatch as well. The, the, the space feels very light and airy, and that's, very the, light that's and always airy. the comment. Exactly. I'd also say for some of you who are a little less uh, in favor of a forward stateroom, the advantage of this stateroom is that the breezes you get here when you're on the hook, the, the prevailing wind tends to tends to really blow through here very well, and that's a real plus. Also, the way the boat is designed with with uh, with a very rounded surface and no hard chines forward, you don't get the water slap that you know you can you can hear a little soothing water, but right. you don't get a hard slap right. like you often will on. Uh, on some hard chine boats. So, and I'm so a fairly forward. sensitive sleeper, but um, I could always sleep in this stateroom. Wonderful. Except once in a while. Once in a while, okay, once there you go. While. But it had nothing to do with that, probably. No. That was a, um, that's a different You didn't story. mention the uh, sconces that are reading light, so you and your partner can sit in bed, and if you don't prefer to watch television, you can. If you're not watching read. the big old TV, you, can, uh, you, you got some good light for reading. You bet. Very good. Let's uh, let's uh, why don't you open the the head door here, and we'll we'll take a quick peek at the. You're going to demonstrate the shower. I'm for going us there, to demonstrate David? the shower. So. Well, no, don't demonstrate all the way, please. At, as you can see, both <laughs> both elbows are fully extended. You have lots of room here. Wonderful, convenient seat if you wish to sit down. Um, if you're less steady on your feet. And the shower is just fabulous. We've used it for years and enjoyed it and got clean as well. <laughs> well, there's a plus. You got clean <laughs> in your shower? We did. Good for you guys. Uh, integrated, uh, is it Corian? Corian, yes. Count uh, counter. And um, you have your swivel, hot and cold shower. Medicine cabinet right here as well as you have additional locker space over here with um, also three towel racks available to you. Those so you have your vacu well. vacu flash head here, which works very well, and um, an electric outlet for a razor or whatever you might need. Let me, uh, I wanna open this compartment here, Anthony, and we'll, uh, we'll have a look. This is the uh, where your um, holding tank is, and also your vacuum flush head, your macerator, and a uh, good bit of bilge space here. And you can see the uh, the condition, the overall condition of that bilge space. Uh, the boat's uh, been very well maintained. Also, 
that hose is all brand new. That's EPDM. It's tried an EPDM hose, and uh, so that uh, that's good to go for the for the long haul. The tank watch has just been serviced as well. The tank monitor, so as have the the vacuum flush uh, vacuum generators. So the the head system should be good to go for the for the long haul. Well, I'd say we need to uh, let's see what's left the engine room. We better head for the engine room and uh, have a look. Two steps down and you're in the engine room. And the, you, as you'll see, I'm again, five, nine and a half, and I have full height. I can stand with no problem. In here you have two Yanmar 440 engines that have delivered service over 3,500 hours with never a beat wrong. And we also have, if you can come in and turn towards your starboard side, I will show um, there's the twin reversa, uh, the reverso oil changing system, which has been very thoughtfully done and leads to all five oil sumps on the boat. The both two, engines, both transmissions, and the generator. And the generator, as well as your twin Raycor filters, which are um, off and you have a third ray core on a primary just on a, the just engine. A fuel filter, right. A fuel filter. But on this boat, there has been an addition. If you can look to port side, there is a fuel filtering system. So were you to be operating this vessel, you would want to take on your fuel as you came into port rather than before you were leaving, which gives you the advantage of polishing your fuel through a two micron Raycor filter for all evening um, and get the cleanest fuel possible, which will help your injectors and of course avoid any problems um, with bad Is fuel. That, did you typically do that, David? Is that how you used your polisher? Absolutely. Okay, well that, that certainly uh, is a great way to, to, to treat your engine to, to excellent fuel. The best fuel. Maybe part of the reason that uh, you've gotten such good service out of it. And, and if you are running in rough seas, you can run. If, if you're concerned about possibly bringing contaminants off the bottom of the fuel tank, you can run this fuel polishing system while you're underway. So it doesn't uh, impede that. Um, let me just close this door for a second. You have um, a sight tubes for both your water tanks, which are forward, and you'll have- All 370 uh, gallons of water. And sight ta uh, tubes for your diesel, which is 300 gallons on each side or 600 gallons total. The Tran, uh, the transmission is not totally electronic. It's fly-by-wire, and I love how the um, gear shifters work. But it's electronic up at the gear shifter and then cabled back to it's the a, it's a Mathers. Uh, it's a Mathers system, Mathers Micro Commander. And so basically it's communicating those boxes via wire, and then it's cabled uh, to the... To the transmission. And I know you're all going to be diligent about checking the oil level every time you start for the day. And so normally I have a roll of paper towels right here and it's very easy. This boat, not uniquely, but is rare instances in a boat this size that you have complete walk around both engines so that you have easy access to get to the oil dipsticks. The, in front of the camera right now is that AC electrical system that we were talking about that will polish your electricity if there were ever a need to do so. And uh, you have your coolant boxes here, which is where you add the coolant. You don't need ever to take off the coolant cups on the engine. Looking aft, you'll see that Bob you'll has... See Bob. <laughs> You'll see Bob, and he's going to tell you about what's going on back there. You're, you're not coming back here really to see me, but uh, you're stuck with me for a minute or two here. So we have uh, the, the generator here, the 12 kilowatt Northern Lights, as we said earlier, around 1,500 hours, and Raycors specifically for the, for the gen set. Um, Krogan Expresses all have an AquaDrive setup. So this is the, 
the, the thrust collar I, I refer to it as. And basically the props drive the boat through this thrust collar. And what that does is it takes the, uh, the necessity of the engines to manage that thrust away and the engines can be more softly mounted on aqua drive. These are actually aqua drive mounts. So that's all part of the system. The engine between the, this collar and the engines are a pair of CV joints. So it's an intermediate shaft and that allows again the engines to move around a little bit more than they would with a conventional system. Uh, about the best investment you can make in keeping noise and vibration down uh, levels down on a boat. So, so we're proud that, that we offer that as well. Um, I, you won't be able to really see them but too, too well, but here's the new mixing elbows that, uh, again, were just replaced uh, 10 hours ago or something, maybe less. They're, they're brand new. Um, what else, David, can you think of that what we What about the generator the re line? behind you? Well, I did point that out, that we've got 12 kilowatt northern lights. And this front panel comes off, and, it, and frankly, most of your uh, services are right there. To the starboard side is your impeller, and it's easy to get that end panel off on that side as well to, uh, to service the, the impeller. So You have extra seals on your shafts um, for replacement without pulling the shafts. So these were installed uh, so that you could actually change the cutlass bearing uh, seal in water. Yeah, the, and, and, and in fact, they're, they're quite new. The, the shafts were uh, pulled and the cutlass bearings replaced uh, again in the last uh, maybe 20 hours. So fresh, uh, fresh seals and, and spare seals as well. Uh, maybe 20 hours ago, so as well as the cutlass bearings. So good to go for a while here. Yep. All right, anything else, David, you can think of while we're done um, here? Easy access to those water filter, raw water filters that go into the engine. And... Um, you're talking about your strainers? The strainers right, right there. Right there on the center line, right by our camera. And, and, and again, the, the seacocks themselves are, are, are easy to get to. Um, again, the, the same theme, the boat is just very, it's, it's a very easily managed, easily maintained, uh, maintained boat. Uh, I, the other thing you, it's obvious, but there's a hatch, uh, where I'm sitting. So while you can access this space and we often do from, from your point of view there, um, it, when we're working back here on the gen set, you got to do a little service or something. We can open the hatch above me and in, in the galley and I can sit on the generator, the dedicated generator. Uh, battery box and, um, and and it just makes servicing the the area a lot a uh, lot better. I would say uh, that's that's most of it. Let's uh, let's head back to the cockpit and uh, kind of wrap this up. Very exciting. Well, David, thanks for joining us on the tour and uh, giving somebody uh, giving everybody watching this someone else to listen to besides myself. Good to have you here to make it a little authentic. Thank you very much. I think those common expressions about how happy a day is um, when you sell this boat, but I can tell you there will be a lot of tears involved when this boat sells because she has been our home and our source of travel and uh, amusement for the last 12 years, and we've loved owning her every minute, and, and the next person to get her will be very lucky. Well, there you go, and 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 by the way, they'll also uh, they'll, they'll also get the same support that, uh, that that you got, and all of our owners get. Uh, you'll get a full uh, orientation when you buy the boat. We'll spend several days with you, and um, you'll have uh, access to our phone numbers. Basically, we'll support the boat as long as you own the boat as well. We call that our concierge service. So you'll have lifetime concierge service support. So um, we do everything we can to make the, the ownership experience as, uh, as, as positive as it can possibly be. That's really our goal. I can attest to that because in the old days when we first bought, bought this boat, cell phone contracts used to have a set number of minutes. And after I bought this boat and needed to call Bob for help, I need to double the number of minutes I had available to me on that cell phone. I remember that four o'clock in the morning call of when you were trying to trying to get the anchor up. That uh... <laughs> and and you were there. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we, we kind of messed up here, but uh, you know we could pop the salmon and uh, and, and have some crackers, but nothing to drink. Nothing better, to better drink. go take care of that. All right. Thank you all. Appreciate you listening um, and, and and watching our uh, our our video tour today. Please uh, give me a call, and, and we'd love to make this boat yours. 
I can be reached at 404-786-4514. You'll see that on the screen there, or send me an email at bob at kroganexpress.com. And of course, you can find us all the time at kroganexpress.com. Have a great day, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the water.